Here's a bit of history about how communism failed in the Soviet Union. In August of 1980, Lech Wałęsa led Polish workers to strike the Gdańsk shipyard, and that gave rise to a wave of protest all across Poland. Wałęsa gave credit to Pope John Paul II. Before his pontificate, the world was divided into blocks. Nobody knew how to get rid of communism. In Warsaw in 1979, he, the Pope, simply said, do not be afraid. Thus, the right to strike and organize unions took root. But in December of 1981, the government cracked down. General Jaruzelski, a hardcore communist, declared martial law, and he arrested Wałęsa and other union leaders. In 1982, I was a member of the first congressional delegation to visit Poland after the declaration of martial law. Our small delegation toured many sites, visiting with church leaders and others who were struggling to make the best of a tense situation. At every stop, the Poles treated us with respect. They were effusive in their praise and kindness. I concluded, the Polish people love America, and they love Americans. And it gave me a good feeling to be on their side and see how much they admired our country. It's plain to see, in retrospect, that the conflict between workers and state at Gdansk was the death knell for communism in Eastern Europe. Just as our visit to Poland was winding down, we received a call from the Vatican. Pope John Paul II had heard of our trip, and as a Pole, he was curious to hear about our visit to his homeland. He invited us to meet with him at the Vatican on our way back to the United States, so we quickly rearranged our itinerary. When we arrived at St. Peter's Square, Vatican officials met us and led us through vast hallways and rooms to the Pope's private apartment. On our way, we passed through a large hall where hundreds of people were waiting for an audience. There were only seven in our delegation. We were obviously receiving special treatment. Eventually, we entered a small room with what appeared to be a throne at one end. Within minutes, Pope John Paul II, dressed in white cassock, entered the room through a side door. He took a seat on the throne and began reading a prepared statement into a microphone welcoming us to the Vatican. I thought it was strange until he finished, shoved the microphone aside and stepped down to meet us. We shook hands and for a remarkable half hour, we talked informally with the world's most important religious leader. He asked about our families, but he was most interested to learn how things were going in his homeland, Poland. His magnetic and engaging personality reminded me of President Reagan. My trip to Poland, a country oppressed by the Soviets and suffering the heavy hand of martial law, exposed me to the hopes and dreams of the Poles and to the goodness and grace of the Holy Father. Emotionally drained, I hungered for home.